I right, just make a quick video of it. See if the shoot even fit. These both machines aren't going to the next job, um, the same job anyway. Just taking the 12, but for reference, that is uh, 23, 24,000 pounds. I think it's industry standard for these dovetails is they lift and carry 10,000 pounds. No, you're good. That machine by itself weighs about 10 plus the limb riser, the grapple, and the winch. That's good. So it didn't have any trouble lifting it in that position. If we get a hold of the way it sits. Real quick, I want to go over the weights on these machines so nobody's confused later on in this video. This is not an overweight or overloaded load for my truck and trailer combination setup. It is just shy of 45,000 pounds, which I am tagged for 45,000 pounds. So we're not overloaded anyway, but the TL12, the machine in the front, weighs really close to 12,000 pounds by itself. It also has a bumper on the back and a brush guard, so 12,000 pounds is a pretty honest figure for it. The yellow one, the Rayco. Just shy of 10,000 pounds machine only, plus it's got a brush grapple on it, limb riser, and the winch on the back is a stout bird. So to say 24,000 pounds would be pretty close to how much the payload is. But let's say 23 to 24,000 pounds, which is just barely heavier than the old Prime Tech. So it's kind of funny how the two machines add up to uh, only what one actually weighs. So anyway, enjoy the video. All right, folks, like I said earlier in the video, I was just loading those two machines on there to test it out to see if they would both fit and how well that would work. Uh, and I want to talk to you guys on this video about how much it would cost to upgrade to run a setup like that. Because um, when I haul the Prime Tech, that thing weighs about 22 and a half, 23,000 pounds. And that puts me at about 42,000 pounds gross, give or take, depending on the gear I have on the truck. I'm only rated and tagged with this setup for 45,000 pounds. Um, that's where I'm held back at i could put the 30k trailer on there and gain a couple extra pounds and make that stretch work but what happens down the road so i'm going to go ahead and try to knock this conversation out while i'm swapping trailers over because i know a lot of you guys would 100 percent like to see a semi on this channel and i would like to see one too to factor in how well that would work for what i do the areas that i work in i think given the last two months worth of work that we've done uh, I think we can make that work, but here's the kicker though. How much would the semi cost to step into one of those versus the fact that in about 16 months, they're going to no longer allow this truck to register in the state of California carb laws, um, anything over 14,000 pounds and they won't register it anymore. You could do certain mileage things, but uh, is it a bummer? Yeah, it's a bummer. This truck has been very good to me and it's pretty much started my business because of this truck and it was able to make us more versatile more mobile on our own made us like able to knock out more work more often helps paycheck when you can do that kind of stuff end of the day i'm still gonna need a 5500 i don't think i could do my whole business with just a semi so let's talk about prices on everything because tomorrow i'm gonna be hauling a skid steer yeah i could use a semi to do it Cost effective? Probably not. I'm gonna use the little buddy trailer. So, would that make a lot of sense to have a big old low boy to do that kind of thing? No. Oh. Would it be cool? Yeah. Let's talk about pricing and stuff like that because like you saw in the beginning of this video I was testing out two machines on the trailer that's about 24,000 pounds worth of cargo payload on the trailer for one rating on the trailer I could prorate it make it happen for that but sticker wise that's pushing it um, my plan was to get a 40k diamond C as of right now it still kind of is because I got a 40k then I can still put it behind a little semi and still run it and run it on the truck as well both on the pickup and on a semi that would be kind of cool that way my idea is you have something that's versatile so that it'll be able to go behind both rigs let's see what do we need here 
I do this shuffle with uh, this winch and these toolboxes between all the trailers because if I need this trailer, I'll shuffle it to that trailer, and then next week I'll need that trailer, shuffle it back to this one. Even if I got a 40K Diamond C gooseneck trailer, which I'm still probably gonna get, that only gives me about 30,000 pounds worth of payload, no matter what pickup or semi is on the front of it. Oh, this way's about done. Diamond C trailer. I'll more than likely sell my old one, even though there's nothing wrong with it, but just to make room for the upgrade because we don't need three gooseneck trailers sitting around. Gooseneck trailer, 30,000 pounds worth of payload. That's pretty awesome. For a pickup, it's not bad. But the way it goes is, if you're running a pickup, most of the time, you're at maximum like capability of the truck. A semi truck, unless you start pulling permits and stuff like that, a semi at stickered weight which is more than likely 80,000 pounds no matter where you're at you're just starting to touch the surface on what that truck's capable of doing the diamond C behind it really be worth it but let's talk about the money because new diamond C trailer how much they gonna run um, when Tavit got his it's close to 30 depending on what dealer you go to some dealers make it even better but the way the economy is going right now I don't know would it be cheaper just to get a used full tilt deck with option of spot to put a machine up on the neck of you know a standard little i'd like to say a little format of a trailer to go behind a semi then you're about broken even i can still keep that one still gotta run a 5500 let's say forty thousand bucks for another gooseneck on the high end but then we gotta go and get another 5500 the way prices are right now we'll just use those for reference which there some places aren't as different as others but a fully equipped truck like this Tradesmen, I don't really want a tradesman. I'd rather have a couple more accessories for the kind of price they're asking But I've seen one that was exactly the truck that I wanted except for I want to get a BMW turnover ball instead of that um, Hatchback thing right there, but that truck was 80,000 bucks for a tradesman. That's right now day and time I know that is expensive for a tradesman, but a 5500 uh, 444 gears, so you still got some highway, but you got good pulling power. No problem. 80,000 bucks right there just a new setup alone 120,000 plus tax that's some big money right there how far along would you be with a semi you semi you got to get a 12 or newer for the state of california else you fall under the same carb things that that one's getting kicked out for you get one at 60,000 that's pretty good that's cheaper than a pickup but you can't drive a semi on every freaking day going to work because i tow probably the way the job's been going lately i think i tow once every two weeks but we're hauling four machines to each job. So that's four trips. The job we're going to tomorrow is, oh, about an hour and a half drive from the house. And I got to pick up a machine midway. So I'm going to take the little buddy trailer, going to leave it there. Then when I come home from work tomorrow, I'm going to hook onto the gooseneck, go get to Prime Tech. But if I only got another gooseneck rated to hold 30,000 pounds of payload, then I'm going to still be in a pinch because. Prime Tech weighs 22. I can't haul the Prime Tech and a skid steer at the same job, so I'd be forced to get some form of a high rated semi trailer. And that's just the way the game is. If you're trying to upgrade, there's not really an in between. You either max out a pickup to the extreme or you just step up to a semi. But then the stickers for registration, those go up in value. Not value, those go up in just price tags. Got to deal with that. Got to deal with a number of other things. The insurance goes up. It's already filed under the bit inspection program and all that jazz. So I got to jump through the commercial hoops just the same. Requirements, all that. So there isn't really too much different on that other than it's just going to cost more money. Come up with a plan where convenience overpowers the amount of money that it's going to cost. Because we were going over a couple figures on a more powerful skid steer. We had a skid steer, the new lamb track. Got quoted a price with a head at over $200,000. That could buy a semi. <laughs> that could buy a new truck for myself. I could buy a new truck for Haas. And probably a trailer somewhere in the middle, depending on if you found a good deal on something used. I don't really like buying used trailers unless they just look absolutely perfect because um, I'd say I treat my trailers well, but other people, they don't really know. Come on, baby. Do the flip.
So anyway, that's where my head's at on the whole pickup versus semi truck conversation. It would be nice. Um, I'd say for move in and install, you know, what do you call it? Just a setup fee per job. I think I'll just charge the same, but it'd be twice as fast because every job you gotta just a setup fee. Just it's in it's in the bill every time it's in the bid. You know, going from job to job, if a semi is gonna get charged or if you're gonna have to charge and pay for a semi to haul your stuff in, obviously you're gonna wrap it up in the bill. So it'll just be the convenience factor. But if I'm gonna already have to fork out X amount of money for one of these trucks, there is on Facebook right now, if I do find a you know how I'm a sucker for like the four chance to get a an 18. I don't want a G56, I'm done with that. It's nice for having fun, but I mean I'm still gonna be rocking this for many months to come. But to have an 18 5500 done up just like this that I could get a good price on, then it would still leave money to get a semi, I think. So either way, I still need a 5500. I'm gonna aim at getting a semi truck if the stars align, kind of thing. It's just kind of like if I just commit to it, pretty much. Just got to make it work because uh, I think three axle or two axle, however you want to call it. Johnny's is, you've seen Johnny's before. That thing, brand new. Uh, yeah, that thing was expensive. I think he said 160, but that, I mean, that's full heavy haul and a bunch of other goodies and stuff added on. Custom ordered, fancy truck, brand new. That'd be kind of a stretch, but he makes that sucker work and he can do jobs on the side with it, which I don't know how he has the time for, but he does it. But anyway, so I'm going to fill up transfer tank, top it off, because like I said, we're going to be out of town tomorrow. And it's just going to be the skid steer, but I hate showing up to a job that's out of town and not having any extra fuel. I only needed to top off about 20 gallons. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about that and see what your guys' input is. Uh, it's kind of cool when you guys send me a link to something you know, like a 5500 or something like that. Pretty much with the same spec truck, just with an ISIN, and it's gotta be probably 16 to 18 or anything like that. I'll take a look at it, find a cool price on it. It's gotta be low miles. I ain't buying no high miles crap for a work truck. I bought this truck at 48,000 miles, and I've had it for six years now. Yeah, I bought it, well, not quite six, but I bought it in December of 15, so five and a half. And it's been a pretty damn good truck and it's opened a lot of doors by having this sucker. Oh yeah, by the way, this setup right here is freaking 50 feet long. There's this little guy with a little buddy. Doesn't make much sense. Because it's the same length as my other my old gooseneck. Don't make it sound like a dying. <laughs> Alright. For everybody that would want to talk about Fords, I'll talk about them real quick because I thought about that. I have a buddy, he does hot shot. He's got a um Everybody always tells me about Grey Gay's trailer, which is an awesome trailer. But <laughs> it's pretty overkill for hauling two pickups. But my buddy, he actually hauls. I'll put a photo up of it right here. He does hot shot and he hauls some real weight. Like dang. And he's got a Ford that does that. And he's got a, I think he says he's got an F450 Platinum on order. And that thing wasn't too much more than, I think he said 86,000 is what he got quoted. That's not too much more than um, a 5,500, but I'm not going to go forward, so don't even worry about that. Uh, that's just, I considered it, but it's not really my style, so I'm going to stick with straight six, have fun with it. But uh, yeah, I just, the prices right now are crazy, so. If I find something right now, it'll have to be an awesome deal because I ain't gonna pay these like these prices right now. No way. <laughs> I did think of one more thing to talk about: dump truck and that pinnel hook trailer that uh, picked up a couple months back to go behind the log truck. I don't think just never got around to setting that thing up behind the logging truck. I think they tried to hook it up one time, and the airlines are too short or something like that, and it hasn't been used since. But that thing was mainly purchased to haul a skitter, but I mean we have other options. And uh, to get a dump truck would be sweet. And then just use that pinnel trailer. But I don't know if that pinnel trailer's got quite enough room to haul both machines. And it's a 40K rated trailer. So then again, it's still at a 30,000 ish payload plus tongue weight stuff. You could make it 35,000, maybe go up to 40, but I think you'd be pushing it. But uh, I did have a question. People are asking how I keep these things charged. I got a solar panel on the side because this is where I park it. 
and the sun typically comes right through here but it does have trickle thing on there but i'll talk about one thing because i did order a new dump trailer and that's supposed to be here it's august now it's supposed to be here september it's supposed to be and it's pretty much well that one's gonna be sold so it's already got a new home just as soon as i get my new one here but we'll talk about that because you people you people <laughs> a couple of you guys are asking what the specs were on it but uh basically take this trailer here with engineer neck and go back to where it hinges at 18 feet that's going to be the new dump trailer right there um it's going to be 20k rated bumper pole not bumper pole gooseneck but it's going to be singles it's not going to be the duels because they you get a dual one and your payload goes up but also does the weight of the whole trailer so you don't really gain too much in my opinion but that's why i don't really want to lean towards getting a dump truck because i'm still specked out with a lot of pickup potential so <sighs> a lot of thinking to go on but at the end of the day it's <laughs> where do you want to spend your 100 g's easy 100 120 that would that's on a light end i think that's what it take to upgrade setup 5500 with a new 40k um sticker price would be 120 which is freaking insane but taylor got pizza in the house cooking so i'm going to eat some pizza we'll see you guys in the next one like comment subscribe comment below your suggestions we'll see you guys on the next one later